Well, one week ago, I told you that national media is not giving you the full story about what is happening in Syria. Specifically, that the Free Syrian Army and the so-called Syrian rebels, who have now lost control of eastern Aleppo, are not freedom fighters. They are, in fact, aligned with terror organizations. And while tens of thousands of you have voiced your support, some other media are asking me, where's the proof? Tonight, the proof in a reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, as I told you, national media has framed the fight in Syria and for Aleppo as anti-Assad rebels against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. What they do not say is that throughout Syria, there are really only two groups fighting against Assad, ISIS and al-Qaeda. In fairness, that is a crude assessment. In reality, there are dozens of small militias and factions fighting Assad. The Free Syrian Army, it's always been made up of many different smaller groups, but the, for the sake of explaining how jihadists are actually the ones fighting Assad, we're going to refer to the Free Syrian Army here as if it is one group. The Free Syrian Army was formed in July of 2011, but within just one year, there were already widespread reports that al-Qaeda in Syria had infiltrated. In 2012, I became the first reporter to question President Obama directly about the U.S. arming a group that had members of al-Qaeda. There's some concern about the U.S. funding uh, the Syrian opposition when there are a lot of reports that al-Qaeda is kind of heading up that opposition. Uh, how do you justify the two? Well, I, uh, I share that concern. Uh, and so uh, what we've done is to say we will provide non-lethal assistance to Syrian opposition leadership that are committed to a political transition, committed to uh, a, uh, an observance of human rights. Well, while there were non-jihadist rebels in the original Free Syrian Army, they did not last long. One year later, in 2013, the CIA began delivering weapons to those Syrian rebels. The shipments began streaming into the country over the past two weeks, along with separate deliveries by the State Department of vehicles and other gear. A flow of material that marks a major escalation of the U.S. role in Syria's civil war. That was the Washington Post in 2013. But things only got worse because while the weapons were flowing in, well, so were jihadists. And by September of 2013, London-based global defense consultancy group IHS Jains reported that 10,000 of the estimated 100,000 insurgent fighters were linked to al-Qaeda. Another 30 to 35,000 belonged to powerful factions that were fighting for an Islamic state within a larger Middle East caliphate stretching from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean. Now, in addition to that, that report showed at least a further 30,000 moderates belonging to groups that have an Islamic character. That means that by late 2013, only 25 to 30,000 so-called rebel fighters were part of secular nationalist groups. Again, that's 25 to 30 percent of the rebel force that could be considered friendly to the West. 70 to 75 percent of forces against Assad in 2013 were jihadists. But that didn't stop the U.S. from sending funding and sending weapons. And with some members of Congress, like Senator Rand Paul, insisting that these rebels were jihadists, by 2015, the U.S. committed $500 million to find and train moderate rebels. Instead, by September, a major blow, 3,000 of the few remaining FSA fighters, they defected from the organization. They proclaimed their allegiance to ISIS. Those fighters belonged to multiple brigades that formed the conglomeration of the FSA. Also in 2015, the Pentagon publicly admitted that an additional 70 U.S.-trained Syrian rebels surrendered a weapons stockpile to al-Nusra. Fighters from Division 30, they surrendered to the al-Qaeda affiliate group after crossing into Syria over the Turkish border. And as for that $500 million moderate rebel training program, that was halted a week later when the Pentagon admitted it had only trained four or five fighters. Not 400 or 4,000, four or five. And it was in 2015 when the International Business Times reported that the moderate movement in Syria could be officially considered dead. As of last week, when the last U.S.-backed rebel faction disbanded its members, joining extremist groups such as the Nusra Front, the al-Qaeda offshoot in the country. Some of the men joined a group called the Levant Front, a coalition of rebel militias that also have ties to al-Qaeda. And again, that was 2015, and yet, through 2016, weapons and funding from the West continued. In September of this year, 2016, the U.S. delivered 3,000 tons of weapons and ammo to fighters in Syria, including rocket launchers and anti-tank guided weapon systems. So what you need to know, it is a fact that since 2012, those so-called moderate rebels in Syria have been absorbed into al-Qaeda groups or pledged allegiance to ISIS. And for the past year, the moderates, they have been gone. 
So when media only calls these groups freedom fighters, and yet these fighters have pledged themselves to Al-Qaeda and to ISIS, then no, make no mistake, they are not looking to make Syria free. They are looking to enslave it, as they have in so many other places. That's Reality Check. Let's talk about that on Twitter.